All right, let's get to it. First, we'll take off this mounting screw. Notice this is ground, it's going to the chassis, and there's two wires coming here. These are going to the power transformer. It is the center tap for the B, and uh, one leg of the filament supply is grounded, so that's what those two wires are. Otherwise, it's not attached to anything now. Something to note about this. Often on the Bakelite blocks that uh, have a quarter inch hex sheet metal screw on them, there is a star washer on the underside. So not up top at the head, it's underneath between the chassis and the Bakelite block. And when you take this out, they tend to fall down. Hang on to it, you want to put it back on there. Hold that in place tightly. Ooh, and look at this one. It's looking a little ugly. And, uh, I'm well, not sure the sides have bulged out. The sides might have bulged a little bit, but I suspect this thing is starting to overheat a little bit. It's kind of starting to melt the tar there. That there it is mounted underneath the power transformer, which may get warm and that may have melted that. Hard to say how the heat does rise. And, although, let's see, how is this thing oriented? Okay, so actually, yeah, this stuff's all on its side, so in normal operation it'd be like this. This would be mounted here. So, yeah, some heat would get up there, but I don't know. I don't know. But they're getting replaced regardless. So, time for the heat gun. So I want to nick the wires on the other side. Should have done that first. These are actually a little easier because the internal caps are so large they fill up the, almost the entire cavity and there's not a whole lot of this wax substance actually left in here. Take it easy. Pry too hard, you will crack. Big light block. The sides are not very thick. See what I mean? These caps are so big. Not a whole lot of, not a whole lot of gunk holding them in place. Just 
clean this out a little bit. I didn't do a very good job on those leads, otherwise these would have come out easier. In addition to just clipping them, if they're still uh, soldered on, they're pretty good. I'm having a little trouble getting them out. See what I mean is I nicked these little wires going in, inside, but they're still soldered in. I should have, uh, uh, I should have unsoldered them first. A little out of practice on these. Again, use your tool of preference, solder sucker, solder wick, desoldering iron. Alright, got that one done in just the same manner. Clear out some of the debris. And then while I'm at it, I want to check out the resistance on these two bleeder resistors. Now these may look quite odd to you if you haven't worked on something of this vintage. They didn't always use stripes like this. This is a little bit earlier system called body and dot. Same color code, same convention sort of. Uh, so the body is the first digit, the end is the second digit, and the stripe or dot is the multiplier. So white is nine, the end is black, so we got nine zero. And then red is 2, so multiply it by 100. 9, 0, 2 more zeros, should be 9,000 ohms. So the thing about these old resistors is they didn't follow the more modern uh, component values. So you can't get a 9,000 ohm resistor these days. Not commonly, you could get a 9,100. Contact. I see how it's changing in value and going up slowly. Uh, that's an indication that there's a capacitor in this circuit. In fact, I know there is because it's a bleeder network. So I got one end negative and the other. Sorry, the negative lead is going to the, the common that's going into that filter cap, and the positive is going to one lug. So that capacitor must have some life left in it. You can't always check resistors in circuits. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. In this case, I can't. Well, so let's talk about that capacitor for a moment. So this guy here, we got a few options. It's a type that has wires just coming right out the bottom. We got three wires. I believe the can is negative, and then we've got three sections inside. 21A, 16 microfarad. 21, 16 microfarad. And is there a third section? There might not be. It's possible that that third wire is actually the common. Let's take a look at the parts list. So that is part 21. Ultralytic 1616. Okay, so there are just two caps in there. And one of those leads is negative. So one lead is going over to the junction of these two power resistors. Another wire is going to the rectifier and this large green resistor here. So that's our first filter cap. Bleeder resistor. The tap there is going to the other capacitor. And the final one should be going to ground, I would have thought.
It is. Okay, yeah. I didn't realize. So this lug over here, this is ground. So one wire from that cap is going here, one wire from the cap is going here, which is a junction of these two resistors. So as I said, we got a couple, uh, a few options. Uh, one, um, disconnect the wires, pull this whole cap out, slice it open right around where this clamp is, pull out the insides, put new caps inside, and remount it, and maybe put some uh, tape around there. The clamp will hold it together pretty well, and run the wires out. In other words, restuff it, hide the new caps inside that to preserve the appearance. Or if you don't care about that, remove it entirely, mount the new cap somewhere underneath, or leave this mounted, clip the wires, and mount the new caps underneath. That's what I'm inclined to do. For sure I'm going to clip the cap out right now so I can test this thing. Test these resistors. Test those two resistors. Okay, so testing this 9000 ohm resistor again. That is pretty darn remarkable. <laughs> These are only 20% tolerance resistors, so that's well within spec. Excellent. And the other guy should be 5000. Look at that. You know, honestly, I have never, I don't think I've ever seen vintage resistors test that well. Certainly not two of them in the same device. It's very, very, very typical that these have drifted up in value. It's 50, 100% even. In other words, measuring twice what they're supposed to, but those are dead on. So I'm going to leave them, but be aware that even though they measure dead on now, these do tend to vary a bit with heat, so they may drift a little. Why does that matter? Well, these do feed into the oscillator circuit, and if the B plus drifts a little bit, it may affect the output frequency a little bit. No voltage regulation in this thing. But, uh, yeah, that's cool. So, new caps, where can we mount them? Well, they're so friggin' small now, so... One of them is really easy. So, we've got this two terminal lug strip here. One's ground, one's the, the junction of these two. Mount the cap right there. Axial lead. Uh, won't be using these, but I'll be using something very similar about this size. So... Blink, just stick the cap on right there. Uh, the other one needs to go to the rectifier and ground. Uh, probably, I was going to say there aren't any grounded leads on this rectifier tube, but yes, there are because they grounded one side of the filament supply. And every tube gets power from that filament supply. So, yep, the 6X5, one of those. Where are we at? Yes, indeed, one of those. So, I can do the filter cap. This guy right here is actually going between two pins on that tube. So, which one of these is grounded? Pin numbers on this, do they? No, they don't. That's annoying. Uh, do, do. Okay, this guy. Because it's got a short wire going from here to here. So this, this is ground. 
so I could put another cap in something like so. Let me back up a little. Something like so. Remember again, this thing gets mounted on its side, so in operation it's going to be going to be like so in typical operation. So if I was to mount the cap in, it would be sticking out like that. So not really near anything hot. These resistors may look really large, but that's just, uh, the components back then could not take much heat. These are probably one watt resistors, maybe two watt. Whereas a modern two watt resistor is way 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 smaller than that believe it or not this is a 2 watt resistor metal film really nice quality could replace something like that <laughs> that is also a 2 watt resistor why do I care why I'm even talking about this so if I mount a re capacitor here it's going to be right above these resistors and if these resistors got really hot so with that capacitor which would shorten its life the caps I use are rated for 105 degrees Celsius, and what does that mean? What it means is, if you look at the specs, say this is rated for 5,000 hours. That means if you ran this, and it's rated for 200 volts, if you ran this at 200 volts at 105 degrees Celsius, Celsius it should last for 5,000 hours. Which really isn't all that long, if you break it down, if you ran this thing 24 hours a day. But if you run these cooler... If you look at the, they have a, a formula, it's kind of exponential. The cooler you run these, the longer they last, and it's a significant factor. It's not linear. In other words, if you cut the temperature in half, say keep it at 50C, they last 10 times longer, something like that. So, the cool, <laughs> all, all it boils down to is, no pun intended, uh, the cooler you run the cap, the longer it'll last. So, my other point about these being two watt resistors and they're so much larger is the heat is spread out over a much larger area. So I don't think this thing probably gets all that warm realistically. And I could bend the cap off to the side a bit too. At any rate, it's probably cooler down here than it is on the other side where the tubes are. Otherwise you could mount a terminal strip somewhere else down around in here and mount a couple caps or again yeah, restuff that cap. For something this this simple I think uh, just get one in here, one in here, bam bam done. There's only two electrolytics in the whole thing. Piece of cake. So values 16 microfarad is not a standard value. You can get 18s. 22s are a lot more common. I believe I've got both lying around here somewhere. I uh, think they are supposed to be... Well, it doesn't say on here. Let's see what it say on the can. Oh, you guys. Oh, uh, oh, wait, there it is. Huh, only 150 volts each section. Jeez, for a cap that size, 16 mic two 16 microfarads at 150 volts. That's uh, that's not a whole lot. This guy's 68 to uh, 200, way, way more capacitance and more voltage. Oh, let's see. So I think I've got a couple 18s around, otherwise uh, for sure I've got a whole bunch of 22s. Going a little bit higher is no problem. These earlier, early electrolytics are typically rated for plus 100% or plus 80%, minus 20%. In other words, you can go all about double the value and you're still within spec. So 22, even 33 wouldn't be too out of the ordinary. The only thing you got to be careful is if you put in too much capacitance when you turn the thing on it's going to look like a dead short, short to the rectifier tube and it uh, could uh, stress it out every time you turn the thing on. 
I seem to have misplaced quite a few of my electrolytic caps. I know they're around here somewhere, just not sure where I put them. So I ended up going with a couple 22 microfarads. I do plan on replacing them when I find uh, caps more appropriate, um, but these will work fine, and for now I just left them tacked in place. And uh, twisted wires back onto this, so this is the other uh, AC cap. Um, and this is where the, the AC line will come in. One of these wires goes right into the primary of the transformer. The other goes to this power switch, which then goes to the other leg of the primary. So it's a little odd in that you've got a couple wires. So what I had taken out of this earlier, they go from some components mounted on this part of the chassis to that. So to really get this out and service it, you have to disconnect those wires. So I unsoldered them. So I'll be putting those back in. But right now, what I want to do is see if I can find. An AC adapter plug that'll fit onto that. So, got out my stash of all the cheater cords and uh, replacement cords I've collected over the years. These are not easy to come by, so when I've seen them for sale at surplus sites, I stocked up. And these are the real deal the old school, late 40s type for TVs with the ears on them. Not what I need for this set, though. And no, I don't have any for sale. Uh, some of these, uh, I, I paid, uh, well, let's just say I paid a bit for them. Some of these are non-polarized with two prongs. And some of these are polarized. What I need is something that's got actual like spades on the other end, like something that would plug into that. Almost more like an extension cord. Most of what I got are the kind with ears on them because that's how most of the sets are. Mostly I work on sets from the late 40s TVs in particular and this is what they often have on them. If I have to, I'll tack in a power cord for now. Now eventually I do need to rig up something to get AC power into this set. I don't recall seeing anything quite like this before, but it occurred to me I could certainly get some push-on spade terminals and attach an AC line cord, make sure they're well insulated, and simply push them on there. Yeah, what do you think? That should work, right? Alright, time for a power-up test. Now, how are we going to know if it's working or not? Well, for now, I'm going to use a scope. I've got it attached to the high output, hooked up on the back of the attenuator. The output jacks on this are a little odd. They are certainly not modern BNC type at all. They're actually sort of a hollow metal input, kind of like small banana jacks, and you would stick a pointed metal end into them that would have a wire attached to it. I don't quite have anything like it. Well, you know, imagine like this. It's actually a probe. Imagine there was a wire in that, and you could stick it in there like so. Ah, uh, and I've got a voltmeter on B+. I've got it plugged into my PR57, set for 117 volts. I got it on the audio range. Oh, hang on. What are you doing? That is not a dog toy. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Tube filaments are lighting up. At least on the rectifier tube. T 
233 volts, 235, that looks good, can't quite tell if the other tubes are glowing, don't seem to have any output, try one of the RF ranges, We've got nothing. All right. So, number of possibilities. Uh, the tubes might be bad. Uh, let's see. No, they are glowing. That's something. Uh, those two paper caps, uh, indeed, uh, may need to be replaced. It could be swamping. If they have a high, if high leakage, they could be swamping out the bias, dragging it down. Assuming that's what they're even used for. Let's take a look at the schematic. So... Oh, that's right, I forgot there's another big light block. So we got 16 in there, which I believe is part of the audio oscillator. If those are leaky, that could certainly prevent that from working. Uh, there's another paper cap there, and if that was leaky, I could see that killing the RF oscillator as well. So, I think it's a pretty good bet that's what the problem is. Or, of course, the tubes could be bad. Okay, so where to start troubleshooting? Well, one thing that struck me odd is... B plus over 200 volts. Well, this original electrolytic is only rated for 150 volts. Fortunately, there are no voltage readings on this service info. But like uh, I'm measuring, my uh, voltmeter was right on this point. This cap is only rated for 150 volts, so there should be. Ooh, giving yourself some safety margin, like 110, 120 volts, maybe, max, while the, set, while the device is operating. So, a couple thoughts. Uh, it could be something wrong with the power transformer, maybe. Or, there's nothing loading this supply down. Like, this other circuitry isn't operating properly, and it's not drawing much current. So the voltage here is a lot higher than it would be normally. <sighs> Except I did measure these two resistors, or these two power resistors, and they seem to measure just fine. So what else would we be loading it down? We got a 500 ohm resistor here. It looks like going to oh we're off to these coils that get switched into the circuit. 20 ohm resistor and then over to the plate to the 6J7. So if that's not operating properly, wouldn't be drawing current. And then it goes into this transformer. If this transformer's open, we could have a problem there. Uh, I did notice that when the uh, modulation is turned on and, on and off, which is the switch here, it's on the schematic here, the current draw varied. So let's see, so that's the off position and the on position. It looks like it actually does switch the plate voltage off and on in that 6J5. That would account for the voltage swinging a bit on the B+. Hmm. Really is a drag that we don't have any voltage chart. So I'm going to double check on the service info to see if they have a voltage rating on an electrolytic cap. No, unfortunately they don't. This is an electrolytic condenser, dual 16 microfarad. Hmm. Well, alright, so what can I do? Well. Simple stuff. Check tubes, tube tester. I can check resistance on some of the resistors down in there. I can replace those caps. 
check switch contacts just for continuity that audio oscillator coil there so got some stuff to do but uh, that B plus being so high that uh, that does trouble me a bit I checked both tubes and they both appear to be good. No shorts and good emissions and no grid leakage. I did, however, notice that one of the mica supports on the 6J7 has broken off. So I would like to replace this eventually, regardless. But uh, these do not appear to be a problem. I had an odd hunch to try checking B plus on the AC mode on my meter. So I got about 234 volts DC, but AC you'd expect there to be just a minor amount of ripple. But check this out. 116 volts or so AC. What the heck? So I put my scope on it and yeah. You had about 300 volts peak to peak AC across, well, from that point, which is the main B plus, supposedly, going to that power resistor, we got the filter cap there, and chassis ground. So how the heck is that possible? Well, uh, my first thought is that something's not upright with the grounding on here, so I got the negative on this cap going over to this pin on the tube which is going over to this lug same for the negative on this cap and then going to the chassis maybe that lug doesn't make a good contact or maybe that pin on the tube socket is not grounded like I thought it was it's for the heck of it let's check the DC on the second capacitor in other words the junction of these two power resistors And now we've got about 2.5 volts AC. That makes sense. And DC wise, 122. That's still way too high though. So, something weird is going on. Maybe the center tap on the power transformer is not grounded like it should be. Another possibility just occurred to me. So, I looked online at somebody else who was working on one of these. And uh, he was getting around 90 or 100 volts DC for his B+. So, yeah, there's that, that tube pin that I was using for ground for that cap. And then the center tap and the transformer should be grounded, too. So I've got to check all these points to make sure that they're all really secured well to ground. Fortunately, it didn't take very long to find the problem. There should be a wire from this point. This is a grounded tube pin, that's why I have the negative lead of this capacitor. Over to this lug, which is a negative lead of this capacitor, and it's riveted to the chassis. And there is a little one inch piece of wire going from here to here. However, let's check the resistance on that. It is 355 ohms, so not acting like a piece of wire very much, is it? So I suspect inside that scrap of wire there's a break. Now how did that happen? Well, it seems to me pretty likely that this filter cap is shorted and all the current, because uh, that, that tie point is also the center tap on the secondary of the power transformer. So all the current for this device would be going through that wire. And uh, if there was an excessive current load, that wire could very well act like a fuse and burn out. So let's jump that wire and try powering this up again and check B+. Alright, let's 
let's see what we get now. Climbing, climbing. And right around 98 volts. That makes a lot more sense to me. With 150 volt caps in there, they're not going to be running this thing at over 200 volts. Uh, capacitor would not last very long. Uh, and also that that's in line with what I had seen online from somebody else who had restored one of these. Fortunately, I already tell you because I already checked. It's still not working. The oscillators are still not oscillating. So next up, let's dig into those capacitors. As much of a pain as they're going to be to get at, I really think they need to go.